Now, we're beginning to arrive. I'd quite like to do a variation on arm swinging that oh, we certainly haven't done within this group and I haven't done for a long time. Um, if you place your feet a little tiny bit wider than shoulders and your arms, one arm swings across the front and one arm swings across the back. So if I do the movement, knees are soft, you're just making this sort of movement. Arms swing out to the sides and then across the middle. That's it. Let the elbows bend a little and let the knees soften a little bit more. So it's a little bit more of a bounce. If anything, it's more of an up and down movement rather than a side to side. That's good. Lovely. Now your eyes are still following that distant horizon, but you're really only looking from left to right, not looking behind you. That's it. Good. Don't force the shoulders. If there's any restriction in the shoulder movement, that backward swing might not be liked by your body. So only let the arms swing behind you as far as it's comfortable. As always with any Qigong movement, don't push through resistance. Acknowledge it. That's it. This is quite an aerobic movement. Listen to each part of the body. Be nosy, be curious. My left knee loves this movement. My right knee says, yes, I can do it, but just respect, sir, respect. That's it. Let the elbows bend a little bit more so the arms are almost being pulled upwards. That's it. And if you're able to, See if you can let the movement come from the crown of the head, from the puppet string. So it's not your legs pushing you up. It's that puppet string that draws the crown of the head upwards. That's it. Ah, oh, good. And then just as with all these repetitive movements, letting the swing get a little less, the arms being pulled up less, little less, little less. <sighs> Until the movement disappears. That's good. Oh. I usually in class will save that for a, uh, a very cold hall where you know we're really having to warm ourselves up um, but it's quite useful to really sort of jiggle the chi and begin to get things moving a little bit more so let's start with the metal movement um, at this moment in time space seems incredibly important so the metal qualities are about our perception of space. The metal element gives us a sense of how big we feel, how squashed we feel, when it feels good to be big, when it feels good to be small, when it feels right to be small. We have that perception you know, of when it's okay to be close to someone, when it's better to be further away. At the moment, the COVID scenario means that, you know, there's a sort of hidden wall between us and other people. So feet a little wider than your shoulders, just the width of each foot wider than your shoulder. Just check that your fingertips aren't going to tickle a wall or a curtain and you have space, that sort of semicircle of space in front of you. That's good. Ah, the slightly wider stance means that when you're having to exercise power and push against those imaginary walls, your body will drop down to give you more power and strength and stability. 
You don't have to think about it, it just happens. So, first part of this movement is just imagining a place where it feels okay to be big. It might be in the room you're in. It might be on the top of the trundle or a high hill. It might be down near the sea. A place where it is good to be big. Oh, maybe you're on your own. Maybe you're with good friends, you know, friend on one side saying, hey, hey, come for a walk on the downs with me. Friend on the other side saying, oh, I just want to have a coffee and a natter. You know, just whatever that need is. And from that expansive place, thumbs fold across the palm, fingers close over the first joint of the thumb. And again, be honest with yourself. If the thumb doesn't like that position, just adjust it so that you can give it a squeeze without it wincing. If the shoulders don't like being quite so high up, lower them to where, lower your arms to where the shoulders feel happy. And from this expansive place, now we can make ourselves small. Arms come forwards, allowing one arm to cross over the other, doesn't matter which, making yourself small. If you're familiar with the movement, go at your own pace from that small place. Keep the fists as close into your chest as possible. The elbows pull back. Yeah, that's it. Keep the fists in close until the elbows can't go any further. Then they drop. Then the fists open and then feel that resistance against the palms of your hands. I know some people don't like the image of the wall, so you can make it a softer resistance, but it is something you have to work hard to create, pushing against that resistance, pushing those walls out, making the space you're in bigger, more expansive. Oh, and you don't have to stop where your physical body stops. How much space do you need? And then breathe in, palms face forwards, fist, and breathe out, wrapping your arms round. If you can remember which arm went on top first, then swap them, but don't worry. Small, tiny, breathe in, keep the fists close into the chest, as you pull the elbows back, elbows drop, hands open, connect with that resistance and breathe out. The out breath gives you that power, that strength. Oh, hold the stretch, breathe in, fist, breathe out. Breathe in. Keep the fists close into the chest, elbows drop. Feel that resistance and breathe out. Sometimes it's easier to create space. Sometimes it's really hard. Again, it's just the way it is today. Hold the stretch, breathe in. Fist, breathe out. Small, tiny, invisible. Breathe in. Let the elbows drop, fists open, palms connect with that resistance, that wall, and breathe out. The wall on beautiful casters, heavy, but you're able to move them. Hold the stretch, breathe in. Last movement, fist, breathe out. and breathe in. Elbows drop, palms open, feeling that resistance and breathe out. Hold that stretch, breathe in, and this time as you breathe out, just let the arms drop. 
Ah, oh. that's good. Feet come back in under the shoulders. Little wriggle. Sometimes the shoulders, they do work hard and all the breath is up in the chest. And then back to the Wu Chi position. Acknowledging that the chest may be moving. Simply taking your attention down to the belly, giving the belly permission to be the point you're breathing into. If that was hard work, focusing on the in-breath, replacing energy you've used up. Ah, oh, have another little wriggle. Ah, oh, that's good. Ah, oh, so. From the metal movement, and again, it's, it's a movement to be used when either life makes you feel squashed or a situation you might be sharing space and you need your own space. You know, you've, we've all been at places where you think, oh, I've just got to go out. I need space to breathe. It's that sort of energy. I'm just going to change the people I can see. That's better. That's lovely. Ah, oh. so from the metal movement, we move on to the water movement. Again, it's a movement that most of you are very familiar with. Stance is quite wide, and you're going to have to require a little bit more space to your left and your right. So I'm just turning a little bit more jauntily to the camera. That's it. So from that wide stance, the first part, before you move, make that water as real as possible. Make it pleasant, safe water. If it's safe up to your thighs, let it be up to your thighs. The last time you were able to stand in warm, safe water might have been a long time ago but just let your memory come back, your feet on the bed of the lake, the seabed, if it's a calm sea, the swimming pool, not slippery, not slimy, feeling the water's supportive qualities. It lightens our workload. And just use the mind sense of touch, palms face down and let your hands gradually drop down until the palms of your hands just touch the top, the surface of the water. Feel the sensations against the palms of your hands. Let your mind begin to make that water as real as possible. Playfully, just slide your hands from side to side, creating little ripples in the surface of the water. Maybe where you're standing, the sun is shining through a roof or you're outside. So the light picks out the ripples the water is clear. You can see through below the surface of the water. That's it. Just standing in the lake, still the earth supporting you through the soles of your feet in the bed of the lake, still the puppet string keeping you light. The water helping that puppet string lighten the workload on the weight bearing joints. And the hands sliding gently over the surface of the water. Not trying to create waves, just feeling the sensations. The ripples against the palms of your hands. The mind's eye seeing the ripples your hands are creating. Now, 
Just slow the movement down until your hands stop moving, still in contact with the water. One hand will now rest on the ledge at the bottom of your spine. The other hand reaches out to your side, palm still facing down, and very gently, just pushing your hand through the surface of the water, feeling the water swirling past your fingers. How real can your mind make that sensation? Lifting your hand up into the air, letting your eyes follow the movement of the hand, dropping down, only as far as your hips, knees and back are happy to drop down. Letting your mind create those drips and dribbles running down your arm, splashing you on the face. Feeling how easily your hand slides through the air. feeling the extra little bit of power to push your hands through the water. <sighs> Seeing the light refracting and reflecting as your hand pushes through the water. Water flowing, flowing past your fingers. only making the movement as large as your body feels comfortable. And the minute this moving hand needs a rest or a change, letting the back of that wrist rest on the ledge at the bottom of the spine, reaching out. The other hand, just having to Reawaken the sensations as that palm pushes through the air, pushes through the water. <sighs> Maybe pausing, really wriggling your fingers, letting the drops splash you on the face the quality of water is to purify, to cleanse, to refresh, to help wash away things you don't need. <sighs> to flow round obstacles rather than headbutt them. Ah. changing sides whenever the moving hand needs a rest. We'll just do three more circles. And at the end of that last circle, bring the moving hand to rest alongside the other still hand. So both hands are resting on the ledge at the bottom of the spine. Feet come back underneath your shoulders. Ah, keep the hands resting on the base of the spine for a little longer just while you begin to remind the breath to drop down into the belly. Skyhook lifts you. Any exercise which perhaps makes you feel a little tired, just be careful at the end when you finish, there's a tendency for the skyhook to disappear as you sort of say, oh, thank God we finished. So just keeping that skyhook present Soft breathing in the belly, breathing in 
replacing, recharging energy you've used up, breathing out, letting go, creating space. Let the arms hang and have a, another well-deserved wriggle and a fidget. That's good. Ah. Now, be prepared. The next five element movement is our ritualized jog. So it's, it's quite energetic. Mm. I never use music any longer. Years ago, I used to use uh, music, which I felt sort of equated with each of the five element movements. And the music I used to play for this next movement, the wood element, was a sort of a gallop and it lasted about two and a half minutes. But you, if you want to imagine music while you're doing this little jog, you can, but um, I won't play any. So we move from the water element. The water element in the five element cycle creates the wood element. And the wood element gives us a sense of direction. Wood is about seeing where our life path leads us. So it's an exercise to do when it's difficult to make plans. Hmm. Does that remind me of a particular time? Hmm. And there are two aspects of the wood element. There's a short term element, which is just seeing your way around, you know, the maze of the here and now. It's like, oh, I've got a plan. How do I get around this? Um, and then there's the longer term one, which is, where am I heading? Where am I leading? Or I hear so many people at different stages in their life, what's the point? So this is about what's the point? Where am I going? It might be where am I going in a week's time? Where am I going in a year? Where am I going in five years? Where is your life path leading? So again, adjust the position of your body so you're not looking straight at the screen. I know you might have to have a little glance at me occasionally, but really let your mind look off to the distant horizon. Feet are right underneath your hips, so it's a relatively narrow stance. And where your eyes see the horizon, Imagine you're standing on a path that leads off to the horizon. And your mind's eye can make that path whatever. But it's a smooth path. It might be a, a footpath up on the downs. It's not being churned up. It's not muddy. It's not slippery. There are no barbed wire fences between you and where that path leads off to the horizon. No obstructions. No cows in fields. That's it. Now, just let the knees soften a little bit more and bring your hands up in front with the palms facing upwards. Now, I'm tempted, I think, I'm going to move much, much closer. You don't really need to see my feet, but I want you to be able to see my hands clearly. So let's just move in a bit closer to the camera. You might lose my head. That's better. Great. So on each hand is a ball of chi. Ball of ki. Ki is Japanese, chi is Chinese. So it's just going to fit nicely. Like our ball of chi, it is light. It's stuck to the palm of the hands and that buoyancy is holding your hands up. It's not like you're holding a, a shot put that you have to put effort into holding. That's it. Now, doesn't matter which hand, just slide one hand round behind the ball and allow the ball to draw that hand forwards. That's good. Not too far, so you're not being drawn off your balance. The elbow's still soft. And let the ball resting on your upturned palm 
draw that hand backwards. Again, not to tension, so it's not like, not power, just drawing it backwards slightly. That's great. Now the front hand with the palm facing forward slides under its ball. The back hand with the ball resting on the palm slides round behind its ball. That's it. Now, let the balls just draw the front hand backwards and the other hand forwards. That's it, lovely. And from that place, just slide that front hand underneath, the back hand under behind, and let the balls gradually draw your hands backwards and forwards. Now, if you begin to move differently to Kim, that's fine, trust. The wood element is about going beyond the judging critical mind. So just allowing those balls to draw your hands backwards and forwards. And without even trying, you'll notice your weight shifts from one leg to the other. That's it. And depending on your experience in life, other things may help with the image. This reminds me of a steam engine, the pistons of a steam engine gradually beginning to draw me forwards. Either the engine making noises. Now, trust your hands to keep moving. Take your gaze away from the screen up to that distant horizon. These balls of chi are drawing you along that path. Letting the movement gradually speed up. The heels of your feet begin to lift off the ground. So instead of a walk, you begin to jog very, very gently. If your body prefers a walk, then a walk is fine. That's it. But this movement drawing you along that path, your eyes looking to where the path disappears over the horizon. Even if you're not sure what the goal is, that desire to just reach beyond the horizon, to be drawn forwards along that path. If you begin to get breathless, just slow the pace down. We're not in a rush, but there is enthusiasm, keenness, eyes bright, shining with excitement at moving along this path. That's it. And then like so many movements, we've started our journey. We don't have to finish it today, but we know we're on the path. So letting that movement gradually slow down, slow down, slow down. The heels of the feet begin to reconnect with the earth. Ah, it's aerobic. The body likes the movement. You might have to put some effort into slowing the movement of the hands down, gradually making the movement slower, smaller, until the hands no longer moving the balls of chi, still supporting your arms, still stuck to the palms of your hands, sky hook lifting you. To allow the chi to settle, just bring your feet slightly wider apart under the shoulders, knees are soft. Take your attention down to the belly. 
the chest will be moving. Allow it to move, but your attention is back at that lower center, breathing in, replacing energy you've used up, breathing out, letting go of waste. And then just slide your hands on top. No need to push down, gravity takes the arms down. And just let the arms hang. Wu Chi standing, soft breathing in the belly. Ah, so we need to calm down a little bit now. The wood element in the five element cycle creates fire. So we move from the wood element to the fire element. And again, it's that sense of letting each element begin to set the scene and empower the next element. And when you're jogging along your life path, the eyes are bright. You don't have a dull glazed look when you know where you're going. You're excited. You know, what's out there is really excited. And that is generating that fire. Excitement, enthusiasm. When you're in days where we could socialize, you know, gathering around a, a, a campfire, the dying embers make you want to tell stories, to share experiencing. You know, that lovely excitement doesn't have to be buzzy. It can be a calm excitement. So the fire element movement, feet just the width of each foot wider than shoulder width stance. Arms start off hanging. The fire element focuses on the heart center. So this movement brings our attention up to the chest. Now, we're going to use the image of the hand like a visor to look out through. So what's out there is exciting but it's a bit frightening. It's as if you're looking out at a very bright light and you can't really see, so you shade your eyes. That's it. Now, if your shoulder doesn't like this position, just rotate the hand round so the shoulder drops down to a safer, more pleasant position. You don't want to be looking out at the world whilst you're grimacing. All right. The elbow is soft, that just turns slightly to one side. So you're not pushing away. You're not sort of saying, keep out, exciting world. You're just keeping it at a safe distance. That's it. Now, whichever hand you are using as your visor, you're going to let your body rotate round in that direction. So the head stays in line with your shoulders. Shoulders and head move. And you just turn as far as you're comfortable. That's it. And let your weight drop back onto that back leg. Great. Now, you can still see clearly, doesn't matter which gap you look through. Hands just shading your eyes so you can look out at that exciting world. And this lazy hand that's just dangling here comes up and pushes across in front of the heart center, the chest. When it can go no further, so I could push hard, but I'm not going to. It's just where the shoulder says that's far enough. This upper hand slides back behind, takes a break, drops down, and the other hand becomes your visor and then just let the body rotate round again, head in line with the shoulders, looking out at that exciting world until you feel resistance in the body. Again, it's not a forced movement. My left knee just says, don't twist me any further. My spine says, that's far enough. All the weight drops onto the back leg. 
this lazy hand comes up, pushes across in front of the heart center, and when it can go no further, your body drops back, that upper hand comes in behind the lower hand, takes a break and a rest from keeping you safe. And the other hand is now your visor that allows you to look out with excitement and feel a little safer as you look out at that so, so exciting world. When you can go no further, that lazy hand comes up, pushes across in front of the chest. The minute that shoulder meets any sort of resistance, you drop back, the upper hand drops down behind the lower hand and the arms swap sides and just rotate round. See if you can allow that movement to happen with a flow so it's not a stop and start. You're not trying to push what's out there away. You can't. You're just keeping it at a safe distance. That upper hand drops down behind the lower hand. The lower hand becomes your visor. Each side will be slightly different according to your shoulders, your knee, your spine. I can let my right hand reach much further forwards before the upper hand has to take a break and swap round. As I rotate, my body doesn't want to rotate so far in this direction. And this left hand pushes across, but there's more stiffness in the left shoulder. So that's as far as I can go comfortably. I could push, but there's tension. So it's a soft movement. Upper hand drops back and slides round. All the time, the eyes bright, shining. Let the breath come and go whenever you need to. Weight drops back as you push across in front of the heart center. Hand swap rolls. We'll just do one more movement to each side. And at the end of that last push, both hands this time, palms turn round, come back to the center and just let the hands slide round and drop down. That's good. Feet come back under the shoulders. Ah, oh, back to the wuchi, soft breathing. We've done two movements now, which really make our attention and our breath come up. The wood movement, that jog is quite aerobic. The breath comes up into the chest. The heart movement, the fire movement, brings our attention up to the chest. So really important, a little bit of Wu Chi standing, arms hanging, soft breathing letting that chi come back down to the lower center. Never a tug of war or battle. If the chest is moving, letting it, simply taking your attention down to the belly, breathing in, recharging, refueling, breathing out, letting go, creating space, using that puppet string to draw you up 
the more the spine can just hang, the easier it is for chi to flow back down to the lower centers. Ah, oh, a little wriggle. And of its nature, the five element creation cycle, we've gone from the wood element to the fire element and fire creates earth. So in the sort of image is that after fire, you have ash and ash is the earth. But the reason for that cycle is that the fire element brings this chi up into the chest. So now we need to do an, an exercise which really keeps us grounded, that really brings us back down and stops us being space cadets. So this is where you become your sumo wrestler. There are lots of Qigong movements about a strong earth connection. They might visualize being a bear. You can be a bear if you want or a sumo wrestler, but big, solid, heavy, you know where your connection with the earth is. And that ritualized placing your feet on the ground. If you've ever seen a, a, a film of sumo wrestlers, part of the ritual is that when they arrive in the ring, they shift their weight to one side, they lift their foot up and boom, they own that earth. And do, don't damage your hips or anything, but that sense of really, boom, this is the earth. You own the earth you stand on. That's it. Now, I'm going to, having, having owned the earth, I'm going to nip forward and just adjust the camera so you can see where, what's going on at a slightly lower level. So just cutting my head off. That's it. Nice wide stance. Yeah, that's good. And as always, that wide stance, as wide as your body is happy. If hips don't like being so wide, don't make it so wide. But we're going to be weightlifters. So part of the movement is bending down, letting the knees, hips, back bend as far as you feel safe. So if the knees are dodgy or the back is vulnerable, don't go down any lower. You can make the earth come up to your hands. Imagine holding heavy, solid, pure, fertile chi of the earth, a clod of earth from your vegetable patch that's been nurtured and, oh, now you're going to lift this up only as far as your knees are. I think I might have to do the movement without you doing it first. I think that's a bit easier. <laughs> Otherwise you'll be looking up and looking down. So let me do the movement and then you follow. So you come down, you feel the weight and you're going to lift it up onto your thighs. So it's so heavy, you can't just lift it straight up and hold it. You need the physicality of your body to hold. And then you take a breath in and you bring it up to your hips. You take a breath in, you lift it up to your chest, and then I'm not going to stop and adjust the camera, but then you take that final breath in and lift up above your head, lifting that chi of earth as high as you can, in effect offering it to the sky, and then your hands come down. So that's the movement. You use your body just like a weightlifter. If you see a, an Olympic weightlifter, they lift their bar up and up and up and then above the head to get their gold medal. Ah, so getting comfortably down, feeling that clod of earth. Take a breath in. And the first breath out gives you the power to lift that earth up to just above your knees. Ugh, there we are, good. Next breath in and the breath out brings the chi to the top of the hips. That's it, lovely. 
Breathe in, next breath out lets you lift it up onto your chest. Oh. And then the final breath out to lift up above, above, and you're reaching up. And when the sky accepts that offering from the earth, the body feels light and the arms come down. Ah, oh. and we'll do it four more times. If that first felt too heavy, the mind is very powerful. So if it felt like too much effort, make the ball of chi a little bit smaller. Don't pick up quite so much. So coming down, really, oh, feeling that weight pulling on your hands, fingers spread, take a breath in and out. Oh. Breathe in to the top of the thighs. Breathe in and out to the chest. And breathe in and lifting, lifting. It's, it's as if you're lifting a heavy box up to someone in your loft. You can't quite get it to them and you lift and you lift and then they take that weight off your hands and the body sighs with relief and the arms come down. Ah. Oh. Third lift. Breathe in and lift to the knees. Breathe in and out to the top of the thighs. In and out to the chest. Final breath in and out to lift and lift. Lifting that precious chi of the earth up to the sky and then allowing the sky to take the weight off your hands, off your arms, off your shoulders, and that lovely sigh of relief when that workload has been taken away. Ah, oh, I've lost track. I think we've got two more, but maybe I'm making you do one too many, but we'll do two more. Ah, oh. ah. Oh feeling that weight pulling on your arms. Breathe in and the out breath gives you the power to lift it up to your knees. In, out breath up to the top of the thighs. In to the chest. And that final breath in and out above your head. Lifting, lifting, lifting. And then when it's accepted and the weight is taken off your hands, that lovely sense of relief. Oh. And one more, last movement. Oh, that's good. Oh. Always making that movement with the out breath. Breathe in, out breath to the knees, breathe in. Out breath to the top of the thighs, breathe in, out breath to the chest, and breathe in and lift, and lift, and lift. And when you're high enough to allow that chi of the earth to be taken off your hands, that lovely lightness as the arms come down, feet come back under the shoulders. Ah. Knees soft, arms just hanging. If your imagery was powerful, it's a very tiring exercise. Really let your feet sink back down into the earth. The chest is breathing, but your body now feels well and truly grounded. Let the breath come in and out through the nose and the belly. Arms just hanging, soft breathing, knees soft, sky hook lifting. That exercise is hard work. So really focusing on that 
in breath, replacing chi you've used up. And have a little wriggle and a jiggle, not too vigorously. I'm just going to, now the sun's shining, suddenly it feels a little bit warmer in here. There we are, that's good. So a little bit of more formal jiggling, a little bit of hair, that's better. Backs of the hands resting on the ledge at the bottom of the spine. So we have created our full five element cycle. We've just practiced the earth element and in the five element cycle from the earth, the earth, creates metal and then you would be able to go back to the metal element. It doesn't matter when you start the cycle, so we could start with the earth and finish with fire. Quite often it's the season that fits the cycle, but it's often our need, our lifestyle says we need a particular element strength at the moment. So backs of the wrists resting on the ledge at the bottom of the spine. Just allow that ball of um, the sky hook to gently jiggle you. That's it. Sometimes the jiggle has to be a little bit more vigorous, but don't stir things up at the moment. We're just using the jiggle to help move on any stuckness. Movement coming from the crown of the head. If this jiggling synchronizes with your breath, that's fine. If it doesn't, that's fine. Just allowing the body to be gently. Always makes me think of James Bond, shaken, not stirred. We don't want to stir the chi up. We just want to gently Jiggle it. There'll be stuff that's still stuck, even after our Qigong session. A little bit of rust under a shoulder, under the corner of a neck, back of a knee. Just loosening that stuckness. Even a tiny little bit of rust will be shaken free, will flow back to places you can get rid of it. Useful chi, stuck in the body, letting it just be shaken loose. helping it flow to where it's more needed. And then gradually allow that jiggle to reduce, to reduce, to reduce. Letting it get less and less until it disappears. It doesn't stop, it just disappears. Make sure the sky hook draws you up to full height Keep the hands resting on the small of the back while you take your attention down to the belly. Breathing out any rubbish you shook loose. Breathing in to draw chi to the storehouse. Helping remind that useful chi that the storehouse is where you can access it. Hands hang. And then our little ritual of shifting your weight, lifting your roots, just loosening the soil around your feet, getting ready to move to another space, another energetic space if you're in the same space. Little shake, that's good. <sighs> 